Hello, Lisa here. Welcome back to my channel and welcome to this walkthrough and discussion of Three Gorgeous Decks by Roxy Sim. So I want to start out by talking about the Sideways Tarot, which was created by Roxy Sim Hermsen and Jade Storm. Now, this is the deck that actually initially caught my attention, and I, I've got a little bit more to say about all of that, but Roxy's artwork is really memorable because as soon as you see it, it just stands out. There's a lot of vivid color. There's a lot of... Um, I want to say busyness, but in a good way. There's a lot happening in the cards. The Sideways Tarot is a majors only deck. And before you click away, I think it's really worth seeing the first few cards. So stick around at least that long before you can jump off, even if you've never had a majors only deck. Because I think that what Roxy's created here is something really cool and different. So I'm going to kind of jump into, I guess, my what, what initially grabbed me about this deck. And that is that it puts the, it's a first person perspective majors only deck. And I think this is where turning the deck sideways, putting it on a, um, like a landscape orientation really does the deck up a lot of favors that does the artwork favors. Cause it really becomes really immersive. So let's get into the, there's, this is the jumbo size version of the deck. And then Roxy also sent me this cute little tin version, which even has a few cards talking about the deck. And I'll show that in a minute, but that is like the cutest thing ever. It's in this custom printed tin. I'm going to set that to the side for now, but first let's jump into the cards and then I'm going to talk you through a little bit of what's included here with the deck. First off though, I, I just have to say, I was so enchanted to see this. It, I don't even know if I can call it a box. It's like a, a, a cardboard envelope, but it's really clever. So it's got this little like sort of hook design that goes in there and then you open it up and you have this fold out and we have our cards, which we'll look at in just a second. And then you have this really great little like letter talks about the creation of the sideways tarot and the purposes of the deck for Roxy, why she created it. I'll just read the intro here. Conceived during the pandemic when the world spun sideways, so did the tarot. Within an hour, thumbnail sketches of the sideways tarot appeared in my morning pages when words turned to drawings. My muse, unleashed by Chris Zidel's painting with fire intuitive art class, was determined to see this deck become reality. It seems I have a very pushy muse. The art for the deck was started in March and finished on Winter Solstice 2020. In many ways, I just sat back and watched it appear on the page. And she goes on from there to tell a little bit more about the story of the deck's creation and what you can expect from working with the deck. But I really actually, I really like this packaging. I thought it was super clever. There's not a lot of paper. It'll store really nicely if I put my decks in my deck in a bag, which I probably will. But that is, um, that is a little bit about the packaging. I just thought that was really clever. But here's what excites me about this deck. Besides the vivid colors, it really excites me to see that like I'm in this card. It's, it's really hard to describe. I just thought it was a really cool concept and it feels dreamy and otherworldly as if you are in a dream or doing some meditation or journey work, which is something I do semi-regularly and then just having this experience. So it, it would be, in my opinion, an excellent deck for path working, but we'll talk more about that in a bit. I love the backings, which of course matches what we see here on the books. And yes, there are two books that are included with the deck. So this is just, I just, I love this style. This feels very colored pencil and pretty and vibrant. And I'm a sucker for color, which a lot of you guys know. So let's just take a quick tour through the cards and then we'll go on from there. And I'll also be talking through two other decks that Roxy sent me to share with you guys. So let's get a little zoom in and how beautifully this will fit my frame, <laughs> and we'll go from there. I think when I'm looking at this, what we're actually seeing is looking down at one's own feet as we're stepping forward into the universe. So we're actually seeing the fool at the cliff edge, and this foot, this foot sort of more towards me here, is just on the edge of the cliff, and this foot is literally stepping into the universe, where that toe is almost like dipping into the universe as if it's ripples in a pond, and there's this absolute trust in the universe happening. It's so clear that that's what's going on. And then we have our dog friend here who's seems to be literally pointing like look out we also have a bumblebee here a butterfly and I love this sort of tree spirit sort of looking out there's this real feeling of being protected and guarded even as we take that trusting step and uh, I'll you know I'll share a sample reading from the guidebook so we can get a feeling for what Roxy's intention are for these cards but it, it very much is a an immersive feeling it's like it's like you know what it is? I have been playing, this is going to sound so ridiculous, but I have been playing with a virtual reality gaming headset lately. And that's kind of what this deck makes me feel like, as if I'm in the scene, not just looking at it. And I know that that's Roxy's intention. And I think she's done it very successfully here, but I really, I really love it. I just, yeah, there's something really, really great about it. And this is, by the way, a kind of shiny cardstock, but it feels 
this is these are printed I believe by game what did she say I think it's game crafter is it game crafter yeah these are printed from game Craft, crafter I'm pretty sure all these decks uh, are printed from game crafter but anyway um but this has like a linen finish um so it feels flexible and super sturdy it's got a bit of shine to it but it's anyway okay enough of that I don't actually care about the cardstock too much with this deck so next we come to the magician and this is where so I get really excited. I actually, I don't think I see any runes in this card, but you'll notice that there are runes throughout Roxy's artwork. Um, and I think this is actually really incredible. And if you are somebody who either already works with runes or would enjoy getting to know runes on a different level, I think Roxy's work could actually be really great for you because the way that she used runes here, even my limited knowledge of runes, and I've studied them, but I haven't, you know, I guess I still feel very much like a beginner where runes are concerned, particularly compared to my tarot practice. But it immediately gave me an additional understanding of the cards. And let me explain what I mean. So here in The Magician, it's like these are my hands and I'm crackling and doing all this magic. And it feels, again, very first person, very immersive. You see all the energy coming out of the fingertips and this idea that we are manifesting and making it happen. It kind of reminds me a little bit. If you've seen the Light Seers tarot, in fact, you know what? Let me grab it because if I'm going to reference it, I might as well show it to you. The Light Seers tarot magician has this vantage point of sort of sitting at a cliff's edge, sort of looking out over the universe and manipulating energy around themselves. And I think, yeah, here it is. So let's bring it in front. So isn't this cool? When you, when you see this card beside it, this is what it made me think of. So here we see our magician looking into this like pool and manipulating the energy. And it's almost as though now we're looking into the pool ourselves and manipulating the energy. Isn't that really cool? How I, I see these two being so compatible. So then I see the rune Kenaz on the left hand, which is like fire and activation and, and passion. And then Dagaz on this hand, which for me is like new day and all this kind of stuff. So I'm going to actually briefly, just because I can't help myself, refer to the rune guide that is in Roxy's guidebook and just see what her associations with these runes are. So for Kenaz, she, or excuse me, she's got it as Kano signifies a mutual opening up to the experience and freedom freedom of giving and receiving bringing new clarity insights and knowledge calls you to light up your life moving it away from darkness and into regeneration and then for dagaz which she has here as dagaz yep represents a breakthrough achieved through hard work undertaken with joy a profound transformation of self with positive outcomes dagaz calls you to seize the day trust in your process for a new day has come and that makes so much sense to me for the magician. And so you can really sort of dive deeper in by working with these along with their rune, runic um, counterparts. So next we have the high priestess. And on one hand, we have a crystal. And then on the other hand, a like a crystal ball, like a sphere. And there's this idea of sort of pulling in assistance from the universe while also using one's intuition and, and inner sight to gain answers to situations. I also think it's kind of interesting that it's as if the sphere is also showing what's happening out here. It's like a, a deeper look at what's happening around one's, oneself, right? So we get this like kind of deeper in look. I love this vision of the Empress, this idea of seeing the actual, the, the baby, the project, the whatnot that is being nurtured. I forgot to look for runes in this one. Yeah, here they are. So here we have Ansu's spiritual communication and um, Perth or um, Perthro. So again, we get this idea of spiritual communication and um, fate, right? Oh, so it makes so much sense. And here we have Yera and then Othala. So this idea of home, especially home being the shoulder where the, the, the baby's head is resting um, and Yera being harvest. This idea of like, we have birthed this new thing. What are we birthing? What are we nurturing? What are we taking care of? Um, I just, I, I really love the rune overlay. Oh, there's also Burkana for birth, of course, around the baby's neck. Um, and, and the Empress doesn't have to represent actual physical babies and birth and mothering, but a lot of times that energy of nurturing and holding space for and creating is definitely in there. In the Emperor, we have, I think that's Ingu's. It's missing its little feet, but it sometimes showed either way, um, or Ingwa's. And then we have Fehu, and Fehu being sort of wealth and, and what we're the, we're the steward of, right? Um, and then Ingu's often, to me, that rune often has to do with... Um, cycle the beginning of something new the 
like almost like a portal or a doorway. That's often what I think of this rune as. It's interesting because we see the emperor sitting on the top of the world and we get this idea of responsibility, also structure within the palm of the hand and the fire in the center, the staff of power. Like there's actually a lot happening here. And I think at first glance, a deck like this might look like it is, um, what's the word I'm looking for? Like not trendy, um, a little bit too niche or kitschy. I don't know what the word is I'm looking for. It's like, it's escaping me. And I guess what I'm trying to come across or convey with my experience of these cards so far is that it feels like it has so much depth, um, even more so to some, to some degree than a 78 card tarot deck might have, because there's this opportunity to really think about each of these archetypes and what they mean. And the runes just give that added layer of intensity that I, I think is really cool. So the Hierophant, and Manaz talks about the relationship we have with ourself. But what catches my attention here is this person is accessing this like book of knowledge, this existing wisdom that is already in the world. And that to me is really what the Hierophant can be about. And it really demystifies, or I guess de-threatens in a way, the Hierophant. I think the Hierophant can be a figure that creates a lot of dissonance for people, a lot of discomfort. And here we see that that, that wisdom we're accessing doesn't have to be through another person, right? It can be a different kind of wisdom we're accessing. And I like that there. The binding, the hand fasting here of the lovers is awesome. We have Wunjo for Joy. Um, we have Feihu here, Burkana. That, that makes a lot of sense, right? There's, there's a venture. All of these symbols on the sleeves, by the way, are the alchemical symbols for the elements, I think. Um, and I think that is also referenced here in her little cheat sheet book. Yeah, air, fire, earth, and water. Yeah, so that's just an elemental symbology, which I think is really cool. Next we have the chariot. Here we have Iwas, which is the wild horse. The previous one, Manaz, is more about humanity and relationship with self and connection. And then we also have um, Nauthies. I was blanking, but we also have Nauthies, which is need. So this idea of like energy and, um, I mean, really, I was for the wild horse and that energy of like relationship with one steed and trust and leaning in and then now these for the need with those two things on the hands of the chariot I get this really cool feeling this idea that the chariot is almost this cloud that we're sitting on and we're going towards the star this is where our focus is even though what we're corralling or the energy we have to harness is kind of going off in these two directions really cool exciting image I love it and then we have strength. I do miss the element of sort of taming another part of oneself. We have Urus here, which can, I think, really speak to, yes, that sort of fortitude and strength, but also a little bit of stubbornness or bullheadedness can come through, which is interesting and not a perspective I often think about with the strength card. Um, and then here we also have uh, Ingwas. I was. I just love the layer. I love the layer. And then here we have Ansus again for the Hermit, which again, spiritual communication, sort of um, receiving downloads from spirit is often what I see that as, or um, coming at things from our highest place. And then Kenna's again for passion. Of course, Kenna's on the hand that's holding the light um, out to shine for others to see is really impactful in my opinion. I really enjoy this. And then the Wheel of Fortune, we have Hagalaz, which makes so much sense, and Fehu, this idea that what comes up must come down, that sometimes we are um, benefiting in some way from the blessings of the universe, and sometimes we are kind of coming tumbling down and having to start over again. And I think that's a really beautiful way to express the dueling energies of the Wheel of Fortune. And then we have justice. And here we have Ansus again, again, spiritual download or access to higher wisdom or higher knowledge. And then we have Tiwas, which to me is about right action and honor and, you know, behaving in a, in a right and just way, which works so well for the justice card that I just can't even. And it's like, I've got one hand holding the scales and one hand holding the sword and taking action with that. And again, this first person perspective just really shifts the way that I look at the card. In the hanged man, it's as if we're looking down at our own feet as we dangle here with the serpent of wisdom sort of coming around here. We have Isa for being suspended. Things are on hold, but also Burkana is behind there on our other foot as if we have a new rebirth just about to begin. And it gives that feeling of the cocooning. And then we have Nauthies in the front, like what is needful, what is needed. And sometimes this is where the element of sacrifice can come into the energy of the hanged man. So I think that's really cool. I'm going to just keep saying I think it's really cool because I do think there's a lot of thought here and I think it makes a lot of sense to me. So here we have death and this is just a really lovely representation of death. I also like that the different arms and hands have taken on different skin tones and different sort of feelings of, of both body shape but also of age. And if you're kind of looking for those subtleties, you recognize that this is, it's almost about incarnating into one energy and then another and then another. It's not about being you specifically in your physical body but having this experience of these energies. I don't know if that made any sense but that's what I'm thinking of. 
my head. Anyway, in the death card, we have Dagaz, again, that idea of, of a new day or of dawn, the idea of where there's an ending, there's a new beginning. And Kenaz, again, that fire, and fire, of course, being an energy of transformation, that makes sense for me. And then we have this leaf that has fallen off a tree, which is a very gentle look at the death card. But we also get a feeling of age here through these hands, this idea that, that there's a letting go. Interesting, because as soon as this person moves their hands, as soon as I take my hands away and let this leaf go, it's going to fall and, again, return back to the universe. And there's this really comforting... Um, cohesion and seeing these unit this swirling universe behind a lot of these characters or underneath them and it just kind of is a reminder of not being alone or not being unsupported very similar here we have temperance who is merging these two energies the blue and the red so you get this idea of sort of weaving them together in equal balance here we have lagus and um, gebo so the gift and um this, 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 Lagus is a tricky one for me. So I'm going to see what she says about it because I read it in a, in a way that it's a little dissonant with what I know it to mean, if that makes any sense. But I often see Lag Lagus as flow, which makes sense in temperance. There's a watery element to Lagus. But um, here she has said about, where is Lagus? Here it is. Signifies the flow of life. Yes, tides, emotion, and intuition. Like water is at a time, it is a time of cleansing. And then for Gebo, she says, the great gift of partnership, romance, and divine union, Gebo calls you to recognize your separateness in relationships and the gift of freedom and unity and sharing. So I think this is about the concept of duality. And then that combined with the flow of life just makes, it makes a lot of sense for temperance. I love that the devil is this like shattered mirror with an eye in the center of it. And really interesting to me to see Wunjo as the solitary rune here because Wunjo is about joy. And, the, and then you can kind of go from there and go, okay, Wunjo is joy, Wunjo is pleasure, um, being happy. And it's as if the, the search or the, the quest for happiness or for joy or for comfort is coming before all else. And then there's this call to look in the mirror, which is really potent, I think. Here we are in the tower, and here we have Hagalaz. Here in the tower, we have Hagalaz with the destruction, the hail, that makes so much sense. The rope, we've like lost our grip on it and we're falling. And then Dagaz, again, the new beginning, the new dawn. It's powerful. And then we found the star. It's like we've picked it up, and its its starlight is washing over us, providing us healing and rejuvenation. And here we have Lagus, the flow again of life, and then Burkana, the new beginning. Then we have the moon and we have uh, Perthro and Kenaz. Interesting, this idea of kind of rolling the dice and then also sort of being awakened or enlivened by something. I feel like the moon often, things are obscure and all these clouds are definitely giving me that feeling of not seeing things particularly clearly. Love that. And we will, do, like I said, we will do a sample draw and read. So here we have the sun, beautiful blooming sunflower. I wish there was more happening in here. I do feel like there's a little bit missing. This one feels like the least... Um, like, it's not grabbing me the same way all the other ones are. It's not bad, considering that I have been, like, gushing over every other card. <laughs> and then Judgment. Here we have um, a gavel and, like, something that I guess the gavel's going to be banged on, I guess. That's kind of what I get from that. And then we have here um, Manas, again, that idea of mankind, of um, our connection to others. And this is where, and then we have Ansu's, that higher self or that connection to higher self or in, uh, not intuition so much as spiritual knowledge. And it's interesting to me because I feel like here there's this feeling of like a reckoning, which of course that's what judgment is, but there's a, a recognition of how our actions have impacted those around us, perhaps coming to terms or coming to grips with that, and then choosing to access that higher wisdom and step into our highest self, which I think Ansus is really helping us to do in here in this card. And then we have the world or the completion, and here we come back to Fehu, and here we have Sowilo, the sun, uh, which is really interesting and is like everything is revealed in full light. There's this sense of sort of wholeness to this card that I really appreciate. I love the hands and heart over the around the earth, particularly because it's clear that here there are two people coming together, even though it's that first person perspective, or at least it kind of looks like that with the hands being slightly different tones. Could be the lighting. It depends, I guess, on how you choose to view it, but that's really beautiful. So let me zoom out. I'm going to do a shuffle of this deck and then I'm going to, oh, it's kind of big. So I'm going to shuffle it from the side. It's a little floppy because of course it's a thinner um, deck because there's only 21 cards or 22 cards, including the pool, of course. I wonder if I can go the other way. I guess hand over hand would be, oh, I'm throwing them around. Hand over hand would be fine. So let's take a look. I really want to shuffle these, like riffle them. 
it feels like really floppy cardstock because it's that linen finish and it's it's thin cards. I do like this card size for sinking into the artwork though. So let's grab a card and we have the world and let's see what Roxy has to say. And we'll talk through the, the books a little bit. So let me set this aside. So there are two booklets that come with this deck. The first booklet is the um, actual tarot guidebook, sideways tarot guidebook. And it is in portrait style, thank goodness. I was a little concerned it was gonna be the other way around. And um, there's a forward, forward, I can't talk. There's a forward here and more about the sideways tarot. And then we have our write-ups, which are very generous. And then at the end of every write-up, there are some questions you can ask. And decks like this are really great for the way I like to read in more of a conversational style where I might pull a card from like a deck like this and then use the prompts as a jumping, jumping off like sort of point for further card draws from other decks. But anyway, that's just one thing that kind of comes to mind. So let's go to the world card. Oh, I'm sorry. I lied. This is not, is it? Yes, this is the guidebook. Okay, sorry, I had a, I had a moment because there's two books and they each have different things. Anyway, so here it says, you've drawn the world. Does this mean you've got it made in the shade that you can rest now? As you look at the two hands cupping the world in a loving embrace, what leaps out at you? The hands are two different colors. Yes, I was right about that. And one seems to be masculine and one more feminine, signifying balance and equality for all. The pearls of wisdom rings on each hand suggest you've come to this point after careful thought and a lot of living. You've gained gifts and wisdom on your journey. Fay who calls for you to enjoy your good fortune, your ability to nourish and provide for yourself. Enjoy your good fortune and share with others. So Wilo calls for you to express your life force in a creative way, leading to self-realization and success. This card tells you that you have successfully completed this part of your journey. It may be that you've finished getting a degree or mastered an apprenticeship. Perhaps you finally paid off your mortgage, or maybe you've been celebrating your 10-year pin in AA. Whatever struggle you've been dealing with for the last few years is over. This does not mean the end or that there will be no more struggles in your life. It means celebrate your success. Bask in the positive flow of energy and pay it forward. When you draw the world, you are back at the beginning of the fool's journey. You've completed one round and deserve to rest and relish your success before starting the next journey. Because life is like that. Nothing ever ends. Look at the planets, stars, whole worlds swirling around the earth, the stars shooting towards your fingers, the brilliant star beneath your thumbs. There's a lot more to come, and right now it looks pretty positive. Journal about the journey that has brought you to this point and ask your inner knowing how you can carry this success forward with love. Questions are, how can I celebrate myself? How can I help others to reach success on their path? And where do I go from here? So you get a real strong feel for the way that these entries are written. And I think it's really beautiful. Definitely the kind of deck that I, this makes me feel not so confused about how I would use a majors only deck. Like just seeing the way that Roxy's put this together, it's like, oh, okay, and Jade Storm. And I don't know who did what role in all of this, but Jade Storm is also credited here. So I'm guessing they did this together. I just really like how this is put together. It seems really clear that you could pull this and journal with it, pull this and meditate with this, pull this and then do a, a reading on what this made you think about. But I feel like there's a lot of depth here. So it feels feels more than just a major arcana deck. It's like a major arcana and rune deck combined. I don't know how to describe the feeling, but it feels like it has a lot to share and I love that. So that's what's in this first book that comes with the deck, um, with this jumbo size deck at least. And then this second book is layouts, spreads, runes, and symbolism. So in here, you get some, some reading examples and layouts that you can play with. There's a few here that you could work with. And then this um, cheat sheet of all the meanings of the runes so that you can reference this when you're looking at the card and kind of put the meaning together yourself. Or you could work with the actual guidebook here and kind of read her intention for the inclusion of those runes. This deck is by Roxy Sim Hermsen and Jade Storm. And the foreword is by Chris Seidel. So those are everybody's roles. Um, really beautiful deck. Again, I'm really excited about this. I think this is really neat and something I will really enjoy working with. I said really a lot. What, um, I think when I saw this little tin version, so let me show you the tin version and share some thoughts. I'm going to just tuck this full size one back into its little envelope package here. I do think this is really clever. Not practical for me for day to day use. So I, I, I would transfer this into a bag for sure, but it is really cute. And I like that it could be easily flattened and stored. So anyway, I'm going to set that aside for now. Let's take a quick look at the tin version, which is exactly the same thing, just much more portable. So this is super cute and portable. It's adorable. It's kind of custom printed with the same cover image on the front here. And then on the back, I would definitely need reading glasses to read, but it does look like this in super tiny text is the same information that was on the inside of the packaging of the jumbo version that I, I already showed you. But I love how portable and cute this is. So when you pull the cards out, I'll just take you through kind of what you get here. So I'm gonna set the cards themselves aside. You have this like little 
card by card kind of mini pamphlet, which looks to me to be the same thing as the layout spreads runes and symbolism, but without the layouts and spreads, right? So this has got a little bit about the deck. And then it goes through the runes in alphabetical order with their in, what they what they mean, which I think if you're familiar with tarot, it's the sort of rune assistance that might be most needed to get the most out of working with this deck. And then also a list of the symbolism and what all those things stand for in the deck, including the elemental symbols that you'll see peppered throughout, and then a little closing as well. So enough information to definitely work effectively with this deck for sure in that. And then the cards themselves, look how cute these are. So for comparison to a standard tarot, so I have the Light Sears tarot here. This is the size of the little tin version. How cute is that? <laughs> so cute. Anyway, so quick little flip through of these. These have the same exact cardstock feeling. Um, so these are really adorable. Same exact thing. I'm not gonna flip through all the cards, but just give you an idea. Super rounded corners. You can definitely still clearly see and identify the runes on the cards and what's happening in them. They're not so tiny that they're unusable by any stretch. And this would be a great little deck to toss in a pocket for like a meditative moment or something like that. So that's really, really cute. So let me set that aside. Now, in the process of looking at these two, Roxy also sent me two of her other decks. So I'm gonna just kind of quickly talk through these and show them to you and then stay tuned till the end because I have more to say about this whole thing. But first let's talk about the Sacred Feminine. Um, this is the Enhanced Edition, I don't know what that means, Oracle Deck by Roxy. So this doesn't have any kind of guidebook or anything like that. Same cardstock, so it's that linen finish kind of glossy, super bendy cardstock. And in this deck, you have, let me get zoomed in so you can kind of see what we're, we're dealing with here. So you have this gorgeous artwork image and then on the back you have a message. So I'll do a shuffle and draw, but for now I just wanna do a quick little flip through. I do really appreciate that it's just the artwork with the titles and, and words on the back, because if you wanted to work with a deck like this purely intuitively, you could in theory um, reback this deck so that you're just working with the artwork alone, which I think is, is neat that that's an option. I know there are some people that don't aren't big fans of words on deck, so it gives you an option. I just, I really enjoy the quality of, oh, that one's backwards. I really enjoy the quality of Roxy's artwork. There's this like swirly, bright, fun, sort of sp spirit infused energy to it that I, I enjoy. This particular deck is not one that I think I would personally be called to work with. It's, I'm not a big fan, I'm one of those people, right? That's not a big fan of words on the back of the cards unless um, it's something that like I'm really motivated about like it has to be something that I'm like yes This is like like if I got a version of Mons Tarot with little messages on this is a bad example But anyways, I'm just pointing out not necessarily my favorite thing I'm gonna try to stop babbling, but the artwork is really gorgeous. I love these roses So I wanted to at least show you the cards and then do a sample draw for you Really pretty. I love all the spirals. There's lots of spirals in Roxy's artwork. I'm a big fan of spirals Love this, it's like drawing down the moon. What's the name of that card? Reflection, that's really beautiful. Here she looks almost sad. What's the card? Grieve, yeah. So pretty. Oh, this is so vibrant and gorgeous. The sunset, yes. Moon phases, inner selfie. Oh, look at this. That is Earth Diva. And our last card is success. So let me zoom out and we'll shuffle and I'll read the back of one of these so you get an idea. Just a little bit awkward card size for me to hand over hand lengthwise. They just feel just a touch long. I don't know that I love the little border on the top and the bottom. I think I would have preferred the artwork to fully take up the image, even if it meant maybe editing down some of the message on the back. But again, as this, you know, take my critique at uh, face value Don't um, and uh, I guess don't take it too seriously because I, I'm also, I also know this isn't a deck I would necessarily work with myself. I just wanted to share it with you guys because I do think Roxy's artwork is, is really lovely. So let's do a sample draw of this one. And here we have, um, she's sitting here with a bouquet of flowers sort of looking down. Reminisce, it is a warm summer day. A light breeze blows and folk music fills the air. A young woman holds a bouquet of daisy flowers for innocence in her lap. 
She sits in front of a vibrant colored tent, showcasing her jewelry and pottery and welcomes you to the festival of rebirth and new beginnings. A renaissance festival bustling with energy where everything old is new again. Everyone is invited to participate, to sing, dance, and revel in the joy of life that harkens back to a simpler time. She wears flowers in her hair, yellow roses for friendship, and red roses for love. See, I do wish, this is one of the things about text on the back of cards, I wish I could like look at the artwork while I'm reading the message, but I have to kind of flip back and forth. Um... The fragrance of flowers, incense, and that unmistakable smoke hangs on the air, creating a mystical experience. Senses are heightened and energy is high, like a flashback to a happier time that brings lightheartedness and joy to mind. Remembering what it was like to feel joy and happiness becomes a way back to feeling them again. Guidance from Reminisce. Reminisce guides you to recommend, excuse me, Reminisce guides you to remember the summer of love by wearing flowers in your hair and listening to music of the time. Music that spoke of love, of dreams, of everyone getting together and building a better world. That energy is still there. Just tap into the spirit of the hippies and sing a little song about peace and love. That's really sweet. Um, so, yeah, you can see it's it's just got that same quality of Roxy's artwork. Again, not necessarily my vibe for an Oracle deck, but I think it's really neat that she put it together this way. Again, my critiques would probably be to ditch the borders in the top and the bottom and to have the messages in a separate guidebook or, and just have like maybe a title and a keyword or two. I think that would make this a lot more usable for me personally, but that comes down to personal taste for sure. So, and it comes in a, in a nice little two part, part box. So I'm gonna set that aside. And lastly, let's take a look at the Pearls of Wisdom Tarot. This is the third edition, the gold edition. Again, I'm not sure all the differences of the editions, you will note that there's this image on the front and it says actual card size, includes linen and UV finish. So that is what is, comes in this box. You have some information on the back. So this includes the poker card sized Pearls of Wisdom tarot deck, the card explanation and meanings, as well as a Pearls of Wisdom book. You get alphabetical listings, spreads and runes and a guided meditations book. So there's quite a lot of goodies in here. This large box I think is created to accommodate the large books that come in the deck. I am not a fan of that mix. I would have preferred for me personally again, and it's not always something that an indie creator can even accommodate, right? So this is just me chatting about preferences, but I would have liked a smaller box that was closer to the size of the deck and then the books to be smaller and chunkier to kind of fit with the deck because it seems really weird to open up a box this big and then have this, this cute little deck. Um, and I will say Roxy's art style is very detailed. So I was definitely a little bit nervous about this detailed art on a smaller poker size card. On the other hand, poker size cards are kind of awesome. So for shuffling and so forth and with a linen card stock, I feel like that could be good. So let's pull out the booklets and set the box aside. So let's get into the decks. It comes in this little organza bag and I'll put that aside. So this is just a little, um, I think this is depicting Roxy. You can see there's a lot happening in the artwork. I'm gonna have to zoom this way in. There's a lot happening. But this looks like just a little extra card, so I'm gonna set that aside, and then we start with the Fool, and I think that is it. Oh, the suits aren't in the order I'm used to, so hold, please. <laughs> Okay, there was another little bonus card, so I'm gonna set that aside. Now, let's take a look quickly at the back of the cards. Again, same card stock as what I've already described. It's like a kind of linen finish, not Sarah, super thick. These will these will shuffle really great. Um, and this is what the back of the cards look like. My only critique here would be, I don't like words on the backs of cards, um, and they are a little bit busy, almost like I'd almost prefer just the center image just blown up, taking up the whole card, just if I'm being nitpicky. And let's see what's going on here. So our fool has Perth, oh, I'm gonna have to test my runes again, you guys, but just like in the sideways tarot, the Pearls of Wisdom tarot is going to have this added layer of runes. I don't know in the minors, but definitely through the majors. And I also think it's really worth pointing out this deck was definitely a labor of love for Roxy. And it was created after she had really gone through a major health struggle and had lost her nine-year-old son and her mother both in a short period of time. So there's a lot of pain and healing and and intensity, I think, really in this artwork as a part of Roxy's personal healing journal, journal, and <laughs> journey. So I think that's really powerful. And I think it's great that she was able to channel all of that into her artwork. And I think these original pieces of art were much bigger than this. The, I think she told me, let's see if it's in her letter. Yeah, the originals are 30 by 40 and 24 by 36. Oh my gosh. Now this Pearls of Wisdom deck was first published in 2007 and then again in 2008. 
Um, and she self-published a high-res borderless deck in 2015 with Game Crafter, which is this one you're seeing here. And this comes in poker, which is the one I have now, as well as jumbo size and then other packages and things. So you can check out the Game Crafter. I will have links to everything down below so you can check out, you know, what, what captures your attention. But I love how our fool is literally in a boat, literally going with the flow. And we have um, Woonjo. I said Perthro, I think, before. We have Woonjo and Burkana. And then our magician. This is so gorgeous. There's so much happening here. The high priestess. So we, I'm not spotting the runes as easily. This artwork is so detailed. Our high priestess is pink, which I kind of love. There's our empress. Our emperor. And if you look at this cube with the flame that our emperor is holding, it is definitely connected to what we see in first person perspective in the in the um, sideways tarot, which I think is super great. So you can definitely see some of the, the imagery or the symbolism that is important to Roxy as an artist coming through in these cards that we also saw in the sideways. And this deck predated the sideways tarot by quite a bit, but still. The Hierophant, we still have that book of knowledge, the key, we have our two supplicants. I love this lover's card with the two trees entwined with one another in this like really loving embrace, just really, and we've got this yin yang dangling from, is that on all the cards? Oh, interesting, sorry, I just noticed. Okay, sorry, I'm gonna go back a little bit. Oh, there's more runes, oh, I just spotted them. Okay, hold on. There isn't any in the, em oh no, they're still in the Empress too. Okay, they're, they're more hidden, they're harder to see. Is there any in the High Priestess? Okay, I don't see the runes. I don't see any runes in the High Priestess, but they might be there. So you guys watching on a bigger screen might be able to see, but I don't see them. But in the Empress, we still have Burkana and um, Yara. Same ones we saw in the Sideways Tarot. Here we have Uru's, I think. Yeah, so Wilo, we have Tiwaz and Dagaz for the Emperor. We have Perthro and Ansus with the Hierophant. Gebo, Manaz, Sowilo. I have no idea what that symbol is. I feel like I've seen it before and I should know, but I don't know. And then we're onto the chariot and here we have Awaz and Tiwaz here. Beautiful unicorns in the chariot. This artwork is detailed and I feel like I would do much better with this artwork in a larger format. I would say, unless you have small hands, um, where this deck is really in, in, in good eyesight. I feel like it'd be easier to work with this deck because the artwork is just so detailed in a larger size. I'm actually really looking forward to watching this footage back because what I can see with my naked eye versus what I'll be able to see when it's on like my computer screen in a bigger, you know, because I've got a very small field of view comparatively. Um, I think it's going to be really gorgeous. Anyways, anyways. The other thing I noticed and I meant to comment on is there's things happening in the borders that also have symbols and meaning going on. And I got distracted earlier, but like, just like in the back of the cards, we have these like necklaces and things hanging. You'll notice that there's things happening in the borders of all of these cards, like the yin yang necklaces dangling, the pomegranate and the apple here with the cut so you can see the pentacle on the inside of the apple, the cut apple. Um, we have the book and the key with, the key is actually made up of the shape of Ansu's. We have, there's a lot, I mean, there is a lot happening in these cards. And these are the kind of, this is the kind of artwork that if you are an intuitive reader or you really like hunting for meaning and symbols in artwork, this is really special. I'm probably going to want to work with this, even though the artwork is small for my eyes, I feel like there's just a lot of richness here. Like here we have strength, and then on her armbands we have Sowilo and Uru's, and then up behind her we have Manas, Tiwas, Sowilo, and Uru's here. So you get this idea of, of what is the forces that she's tapping into in order to tame this lion. I mean, there's just so much depth and richness to this artwork. So here we have the Hermit, um, again, it's interesting to pay attention to the border. We have the snake crawling up the tree here. We have the hermit's lamp, um, a shelf of books. There's just, there's so much you, your eyes could go to, especially if, like I said, you really like to key into the imagery. If you're doing a reading and really notice what jumps out at you at any particular point, there's so much here. Wheel of Fortune. I know this is going to be a long video, but I just, I really wanted to show these decks together because there's a lot of connection between the different kinds of um, things that she's done. And I wanted to have it all together. So here we have Justice. We have the crossed swords on the sides. This is so beautiful. And again, I could just, with the runes added layering in here, here we have Wunjo and um, Isa here. This is really, it's really great. Death. Look at this literally stepping. There's this line and there's like one whole type of environment here and then a different kind of glowy, lighter, brighter environment here. So we're letting go of the old. We're shedding the mask, stepping forward into the new. That's really beautiful. 
temperance and we see our yin yangs again they're dangling upside down but same same kind of idea that idea of duality and connection and balance oh man this is powerful the devil again we have a mirror reference which i think i love mirror references in the devil because of course the devil is when we really face our own true selves and what's happening in there the tower the star this artwork is just so detailed the moon and if you love like vibrant color this is just this is everything the sun judgment the world oh i love this she's like gone through the door here we have manas and dagas dagas i said dagas manas and dagas why can't i talk i don't know anyway and then we're into the Minor Arcana. So still runes, which is incredible to me. So here we have the Ace of Wands and we have Urus here. The Two of Wands, we have Awas showing up there and there. And then up here we have, um, oh, Thurisaz and Rido. The Three of Wands, there's our ship. The Four of Wands, oh my gosh, there's just, again, so much depth. The Five of Wands. So much happening there. The Six of Wands. Yeah. The Seven of Wands. Again, two runes in the border. Eight of Wands. The Nine of Wands. Ten of Wands. Page. Knight. I love that he's leaping over this river. I love that. Queen. And King. And then we are into the cups. I love that this this cup is being poured over her. That is the coolest thing for me for the um, Ace of Wands. It's really beautiful. The Two of Wands, love that. Or excuse me, cups, 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 cups. I knew what I was seeing. I was just saying the wrong thing. Three of Cups. The Four of Cups, so pretty. Five of Cups. Six. Seven, the eight. Oh, I love this nine. Nine of Cups is one of my cards I look I always look to. And the ten. I love that we have a community here versus like your traditional, like sort of stereotypical family. And then we have our page of cups, knight, queen, and king. And then we're into the swords, ace of swords. Or two, you get this standoff feeling here. Three, four, kind of protected or walled off here. Five, yes to Hagalaz and Sawilo here. No, Hagalaz and Iwas here. Huh. Six of swords, seven of swords. Very Rider Waite Smith. This does lean heavily into Rider Waite Smith meaning. You can really feel that in the artwork. But the runes, again, just add this whole other layer, which is so great. The Eight of Swords, Nine of Swords, and Ten. Then we have our Page, Knight, Queen, and King. Finally, we have our Ace of Pentacles. The Two of Pentacles, definitely on about doing a balancing act there. Our three of pentacles, four, oh, the feels, five, six. This literally makes me think of the fool card in the Thoth tarot. <laughs> it's just the color of the outfit, I think. The seven, oops, the eight, love the rainbow here, nine, ten, Look at all this security and happiness. Page, counting his money, doing his accounting work. The knight, the queen, and the king. I so wish, yeah, lovely shuffle with that linen cardstock. I do really, really wish to see this larger on my screen. I think I'll have fun editing this video because I will get to like zoom in and like take a closer look at the symbols. I will say it is hard for me sometimes to work with decks that are this detailed, but also this physically small. And I think I would definitely do better with a larger size, but it is really beautiful. There's so much happening in all of these cards. This would be a really great deck for those of you who really enjoy that more vivid 
detailed artwork or who like vis visually rich imagery where you can really like, this reminds me, okay, style wise, this gives me a lot of the same feelings that I get from the Bonefire Tarot by Gabby Angus West. There's like a lot going on in the cards. They feel like there's a lot of movement and a lot of little symbols and things happening all the way around. And so when you pull the, when I work with the Bone uh, Bonefire Tarot, it's the same thing. Like I'll pull some cards and like maybe that day this symbol jumps out at me, but on a different day, a different symbol jumps out at me. And I feel like that's kind of how this deck would work. Like one day pulling the three of cups, I'd notice one thing. And then the next day, maybe I'd notice one particular rune or, you know, and I think it just gives you a lot to work with. And I don't think you need to like, I, in case I haven't said it already, I don't think you need to know the runes well to enjoy their element in this deck because there is those cheat sheets to help you. So let's talk about the guidebook and I'll pull a sample card and we can explore what that could look like in the guidebook. So. So we have here the, the world card. Wait, isn't that the one I also got for the, it is the one I got. Well, okay, let's explore it. <laughs> it's kind of funny though. So there are two booklets with this as well really cool. So I'm going to talk about this one first. This is what I was not expecting. So there's a whole book of guided meditations for the major arcana in the Pearls of Wisdom. But do you see what I mean when you can see the artwork really nice and big? It just, oh, yeah. So this, for every single major arcana, there is literally a guided meditation. So you could pull the card out and read this and reference the card. You could record this for yourself and play it back. These are actual little little journeys, little guided meditation, essentially path working. When we talk about path working in the tarot community, this is what we're talking about. It's like imagining you are in that card. So in this case, you are embodying each of the individual cards. You are the emperor, you are the hierophant. And then, and then there's a sort of descriptive journey that you can go on with that experience. So that's really cool. And then in the back, there is a couple of journaling pages for you to make note of, not enough journaling room for me personally, but I love that it's included and you could write in here. And then the actual guidebook, you have the same kind of thing we had with the sideways tarot. So you have accept, accept. This has the pearls of wisdom separate from the actual write-ups. So the pearls of wisdom are basically like words of wisdom from others, so quotes, and a little snippet. So the Pearl of Wisdom, for example, let's go to the Pearl of Wisdom for the world card since that's the one I drew. So the Pearl of Wisdom from the world is to strive to live your life joyfully in relationship with yourself. Seek balance within. Your relationship with yourself is most important. Dance for joy. Your energy will hold you up as you dance through life and become your own cheerleader. Anything is possible when you have the key to the world and the Pearls of Wisdom to go beyond. And the quote here is, follow your bliss and the universe will open doors where there were only walls. Joseph Campbell. So you get that, kind of, that quote, right? But then, and it does that for the entire deck. And then you get your actual write-ups for the card. So now that we've had the Pearls of Wisdom section, we go on to the regular guidebook style entries here. So for the world, it says, in Roman numeral 21 or number 21, which reduces down to number three pairing with the Empress. Um, oh, sorry, the world is Roman numeral 21, which reduces down to number three pairing with the Empress. As such, the world is about the body, mind, and spirit, past, present, and future, faith, wisdom, and courage. The world's encircling strand of pearls depicts wholeness and completion. Much wisdom has been gained on her journey, and her strand of pearls is magnificent. As the world performs the dance of life and unseen force, her inner joy allows her to seemingly float on a cloud. The world moves forward toward her destiny despite past pains and challenges of life. This is a time of success and balance. The infinity symbols on her double terminated crystal baton act as a vessel for divine energy to flow through and guide her. The doorway of perception opens towards the continually expanding consciousness of the universe, and she has the key. Her costume of top hat and tails indicates her many achievements, especially that of balancing masculine and feminine energies. And that is the message you get. And if we continue through the guidebook, we get that for all 78 cards, we'll get a little write-up. And then there is an alphabetical listing of all of the symbols in the deck. So just like we had with the sideways tarot, you get this idea that you can reference the colors, the different items you might see in the artwork, which this is really great. I think there's a lot of learning to be having you explore the intentional placement of symbols in decks. I think there's a lot there that you could study and work with. And then there are three spreads you can use to work with the deck. And then as well, her um, rune write-ups that go with this deck also. So you can definitely learn more over at roxyartwork.com. I will have links down below to everything, but don't run away just yet because what I'm going to do, um, Roxy very generously sent me all of these decks for review. And what I'd like to do is share 
two of them with you guys. So I'm going to keep, I'm not gonna put this back in this bag. What am I even thinking? I'm going to be giving away the Sacred Feminine Oracle. So that is this deck here. I, I do know that I probably won't work with this one, so I'd like it to find a new loving home. And I'm also going to be giving away the tin size version of the sideways, I have it upside down, of the sideways tarot. This is a complete little set all by itself. So all you have to do to enter is please don't mention the word giveaway in the comments because then we'll get this big flood of people who are only here for that. So leave a comment down below and tell me what your favorite color is. That's it. These are such vibrant, colorful decks that just felt like an appropriate question. So tell me your favorite color and that will let me know that you want to be entered to win. If you don't want either of these, like you wanna enter for just the Sideways Tarot or just the Sacred Feminine Oracle deck, let me know that. Just simply say, you know, I'm not really all that interested in whatever and I'll know to only enter you for one of them. But I'll do two separate draws. I'll do those draws at least a week from today, but I will probably close entries after about a week. So this is how I typically will do my giveaways here on the channel. I'll give it about a week and then whoever has commented in that first week, those are who, those are the people who I enter. So if you wanna be entered to win these, just let me know. I will be happy to ship these anywhere that you happen to live that accepts this kind of mail. However, please note that if you're in the European Union or if you're in an international winner, you could be subject to duties or taxes when you receive it. But thank you again so much to Roxy for sharing this with me. I'm really excited to dig in and play with the Sideways Tarot and to learn a little bit more about the Pearls of Wisdom Tarot. Thank you so, so much for watching this video. Please do remember to click the like button if you enjoyed it or, well, there's my thumb. If you enjoyed it or found value in it, subscribe if you're new here and don't forget to click the notification bell so you're notified of all my future videos. Thank you so, so much and may your magic always shine from the inside out. Bye guys.